folks, I had to search for a while um, to find a picture that uh, I felt was quasi-appropriate. And the picture, obviously, that you see is of Neil Gorsuch. He is the current nominee for the Supreme Court. And behind him is basically a symbol for NYU uh, Law, which is the New York University uh, Law School. And how this guy uh, was able to, I guess, give a speech there mm, is open to question. Most people probably didn't know this guy's history or background or record. And he is reportedly a very uh, intellectual uh, judge. But that being said, it's going to be on and cracking this week as the Republican Party is going to change the rules and basically castrate the uh, Democratic uh, Party or Democratic uh, senators. The nuclear option, which is uh, the rule that it takes 60 votes to break a filibuster or 60 votes to bring closure to a debate, closure being discussion of a debate and a vote called. It takes 60 votes currently on a Supreme Court uh, justice nominee to uh, bring the matter to a vote for the full Senate. Well, the Republicans can't get 60 votes, okay? They have uh, approximately 52 votes, and they need eight Democrats uh, to vote with them on closure. Thus far, they got three. So they would not be able to break a filibuster. Now, the only way that they can do that is to change the rules. And that's exactly what they are going to do. Now, you're going to hear a lot of the Republicans uh, screaming that there has never been a successful filibuster of a majority supported uh, nominee. And that actually, uh, there's really never been a filibuster of a Supreme Court uh, Justice nominee, period. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that is a lie. The longest and most successful filibuster of a Supreme Court Justice nominee took place last year. Now, you may be shaking your heads, but truly, Justice or Judge Merrick Garland was filibustered for approximately 10 months. He was filibustered from uh, February of last year through uh, January of uh, this year when Donald Trump took office. So actually that's like uh, 11 months, basically. Their filibuster was so egregious that they didn't even have to take a vote. They decided that they were not going to allow Mr. Garland either to meet, to have a hearing, or to get a vote. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that is a filibuster supreme. That is the ultimate filibuster. So for them to say that they have or didn't filibuster Merrick Garland is a straight out lie. Now, I got my issues with Judge Gorsuch, and I have my issues with Merrick Garland. And to be honest with you, I think 
President Obama misplayed his hand. I honestly believe that if President Obama had nominated a black judge for that position, that a firestorm would have occurred. But, you know, Obama, he, when it comes to issues of race, he's, uh, he's definitely wanting. And when it comes to actual fairness for our people, you know, he was missing in action. My problem with Gorsuch is that he has never seen a corporation that he didn't want to side with. Sorry, folks, I had to take a quick break. Anyway, um, it only takes one really bad ruling to either destroy somebody's life or even to take their life. This particular judge has had several. The one that really burns my butt is a ruling of a black man who was a truck driver for a company. And he got stuck out on the road in sub-zero weather. And his truck became disabled. Well, actually, it was his container that became disabled. Now, this man had to make a decision. So what did he do? He called the company and let them know what was going on. And they told him to wait, and they were going to send help. Two hours later, in sub-zero degree weather, no help had come. So that individual had to make a decision. Do I sit here with no heat and freeze to death, or do I unhitch my load and drive to a place of safety? Well, obviously, common sense dictates you unhitch your load, you drive to a place of safety. Well, the company fired him for doing that. And he obviously sued under the labor laws. Well, the case came before Judge Gorsuch, and he sided with the company, drawing a very, very, very narrow opinion, which absolutely made no sense. And if you watch the Judiciary Committee hearing, you could see, or can see, that Al Franken cut him a new one on it. What makes it even worse was that a couple of other judges uh, went along with him, at least one, I believe it was a three-judge panel, and the ruling had to be appealed to the Supreme Court. Well, guess what? The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the truck driver eight to zero. So does that tell you anything? It tells me that one, this guy has no common sense or any common decency as the company didn't have any common sense or decency either. And Number two, there's another judge that was on that the lower court that uh, had no common sense or decency. And number three, this guy is still defending that decision. So that's just one of the things. He's had some rulings. He was the judge on the Hobby Lobby case where he ruled that a corporation has the right to decide what type of health benefits that they are willing to allow on their policy, even if the benefits are F-R-E-E -E free. And he also uh, had a Planned Parenthood case in front of him that he decided against Planned Parenthood. So, like I said, it only takes a couple. 
of bad decisions to have an adverse effect on the American people. And honestly, I'm just not willing to put my eggs in this guy's basket. Now, in the review of his record, it was discovered that he's even further right than Justice Anton Scalia, who he is replacing. And he's just slightly less right than Clarence Thomas, who is the most conservative judge in the history of the Supreme Court. So, though it would not absolutely swing uh, the court to completely conservative because of Justice Kennedy. The fear is that this guy would lock in a, quite a few five to four decisions where Kennedy sided with the conservatives. And if Kennedy or God forbid Ginsburg decide to retire or pass away within the next three plus years, that the court will obviously be swung completely to the right. And there will be no possibility of change for at least the next 10 to 15 years. So the Democrats, you need to uh, dig in your heels on this one. And even though I believe that you are going to uh, lose because Harry Reid is going to declare the nuclear option, um, this one should be practiced for the next one, and that next one is going to be a humdinger.